Recently, I made a video about how to farm for one of the best PvP weapons in D2, the Mindbender's Ambition Shotgun. I'm really glad that a lot of people found the guide helpful, and as always, I asked that if anyone had any additional info or tips they would like to share, to feel free to do so down in the comment section. And of course, you people went full ham. Now, I gotta be honest, some of these tips were actually pretty helpful, but after some careful consideration and thought, I've come to the conclusion that some of y'all are straight up on drugs still. But I love all of you just the same, so let's revisit the Mindbender farm while the Nightfall is still on the table and talk about which viewer advice I should take to heart in my farming and which advice was not so much. <clears throat> okay, starting off, what do we get? I have all these comments screen capped in a little folder. Number one. <laughs> okay, yes, yes, you can choose between Nightfalls. <laughs> you see what I'm talking about? God, I love you people. So here, go to Orbit, and when you go to the Vanguard directory here, this is the main Nightfall for Pinnacle Gear acquisition, and over here is where there are three different Nightfalls you can choose from that rotate each week. Mind blown. As you can tell, Hollowed Lair is available right now, meaning you can still farm the Mindbender until Tuesday. May RNG bless you, my child. Okay, what's next? Ah yes, some of the folks were banging the drum about the Peregrine Greaves. This guy in particular about the Peregrine Greaves and the Lord of Wolves. So, we tried it, and my official verdict on that is... Eh. The Lord of Puppers didn't do so hot against the mini-bosses or the Fnatic, and it was okay in terms of ad killing. Peregrine Greaves shoulder charge, as expected, did big damage to the Fnatic and quickly pushed him into his immune phase. The only real problem is that the method I went over in the original farm video was just fine in terms of damaging the Fnatic. If we were looking at a different strike boss and methods to quickly melt, this combo probably would have been a tad better, but we were kind of looking for ways to nuke trash more efficiently. The Peregrine Hammer Strike was pretty good against the Abomination though, but if you already have someone running Oppressive Darkness, that should be fine for now. Keep in mind though, Oppressive Darkness is going away in Season 9, so ye old Peregrine and Hammer Strike might be good if you want to farm the Mindbender next season. Okay, what's next? Alright, here we go. Solar Singe Hallowfire Heart double Breach Refractor. While I don't expect this to work, I like where your head's at. For those of you who don't know, Hollow Fire Heart gives quicker ability cooldowns when your super is fully charged. You combine that with double Breach Refractor, which is getting patched by the way, boys, don't forget that. In theory, could be a ton of heavy hitting grenade spam over and over. This was sorta okay, but I'd be lying if I said it would be my new go-to. Believe it or not, even with really high discipline, double Breach Refractor and Hollow Fire heart. My grenades weren't coming back as lightning quick as I'd hoped. The other bummer about this build was that in order for the faster nade recharge rate, you gotta hold on to your super, which is hella lame, because you really need roaming supers for this strike to clear out the damn adds faster in certain rooms. I do appreciate the suggestion though, it was a pretty good idea. Okay, what's next? <laughs> uh, hey dear. Yeah? Come here. Okay. Come here a minute. What is it? <laughs> I want you to read this. Read this out loud for the people at home. Titan is best true. Match up for this nightfall. You can easily solo it with <laughs> traffic light portraits. <laughs> okay, what, what is that? Explain what that is. Well, as, the, as, as a resident Titan main, the, what, it, the, what is the traffic light portrait? Well, fortress? the first part is true. The Titan is the best. Okay, what's, the, what's this right here? <laughs> what's, what's this piece of gear? <laughs> traffic light fortress? I don't know. I can't. Uh, I can't help you. I know. Uh, you did great. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Lord. All right. So, uh, y'all Titans out there, you sniffing glue or what? Someone do me a favor. If you're at home and you can decipher this uh, Zodiac level code, get at me. I will talk about the idea, though, of soloing the Nightfall. Even if you're the best solo player of all time, avoid soloing the Nightfall if possible unless you really really want the Mindbender and have absolutely zero friends. Actually, no, I take that back. Even if you have no friends, use an LFG site. Farming weapons is all about speed and efficiency, and even though I have no doubts that most people could solo the Nightfall, just 
why would you? This is like intentionally walking five miles to the grocery store and carrying back 20 bags when you own a car. Another thing in that comment I want to talk about, though, I did rag on Titans in the last video. Now, that wasn't really fair. A few of you had suggestions around that, saying I might not be giving Titans a good shake in this strike, although I stand by part of what I said. Tether Hunters and Dawnblades are god tier for doing this Nightfall quickly because they are great at shredding ads. Now, two suggestions that came up a few times in the last video that I wanted to try out, both the Doomfang Pauldrons and also Middle Tree Sentinel Titan. Out of every suggestion that I got, these two were actually the best by far. I officially apologize for saying what I did in the last video about Titans, because I had turned on Solar Singe, I was only thinking about Solar Titans for ad clearing, which IMO aren't as good as Bottom Tree Dawnblade. But just because you have a Solar Singe, doesn't mean you gotta roll a solar subclass. I mean, just look at the Tether Hunter. Oh man, maybe the person that was on drugs all along was me. With that being said, Middle Tree Void Titan absolutely ruins ads in the final boss encounter, especially with the Void Wall Grenade. I would put that build equal or even potentially above Bottom Tree Dawnblade. The combination of controlled demolition along with resupply and oppressive darkness and breach refractor on top is crazy good. I was popping ads left and right, pretty much like popcorn in that final encounter. And the grenade comes back so fast. Combine it with a Hunter Tether and it's pretty much just a never-ending lull factory. Again, as good as or better than Dawnblade Bottom Tree. Probably better because the grenade charges faster than a super, naturally. Also, the Doomfang Pauldrons. Uh, duh. Super, super good. You might not even need to with the above grenade spam tactic, but you know, pop your super, toss a shield in there, extend super, you know the drill. Someone had suggested that the mid-tree Sentinel Titan grenades alone could mollywop the walker tank, which turned out not being true. I do recommend it though in combination with what I mentioned in the last video, aka the 1k, and that's a sick, nasty combo together. It probably would be much stronger on the tank if you turned on a Void Singe instead of a Solar Singe, but I really advise against doing that because with a Void Singe, you will 100% get cross-mapped and one-shotted by those D-bag Scorn with Void Crossbow Snipers. Don't do it, man. Don't end up like Cade's Ghost. All right, where were we? Ah, yes, someone on Twitter mentioned that Top Tree Storm, Crown of Tempest, and Grenadier was a hot combo. So again, for the Nightfall this week, being one of those side three Nightfalls, your only chance at putting on modifiers is via your Five of Swords card, which, if you'll recall, does not have the ability to put on Grenadier. Sad face. All right, looks like we got two left here. What do we got? Aha, you might say this suggestion is the besto. <laughs> Sorry, Telesto was actually pretty fun. It was okay at clearing out ads overall. I was actually hoping it would be a little bit more effective, but it actually doesn't hold a candle to Middle Tree Sentinel. This other suggestion, which I strongly put into definitely okay territory, is the Risk Runner. That actually was a lot of fun and did help out a bunch in certain situations. There's plenty of arc in the strike, especially during the final boss encounter, so if you don't have a 1k, you could definitely just throw on an Outrageous Fortune as your power weapon and go to town with the Risk Runner. There were more suggestions, but I'd rather not make this video an hour long. Your brainstorming was greatly appreciated, though. If I had a chance to go back and modify my original farming strat, here would be my official change. Have one Middle Tree Sentinel Titan with Oppressive Darkness, Doomfang Pauldrons, Breach Refractor, and a ton of Discipline. Boom. Perfect. You could even have two and pair them together with one Tether Hunter. I still believe that the Tether Hunter is pretty mandatory, but any combo of at least one Hunter and Bottom Tree Dawn or Middle Tree Sentinel would be great. And I gotta say, in my mind, the 1k is still the best option IMO at nuking both the Walker Tank, the Abomination, and the Fanatic very quickly. That is the play, boys. Kill ads fast and tear through the Nightfall in seven-ish minutes, rinse and repeat. Worked out for me, anyway. Check out this beauty I got the other night. Remember, farming can pay off, fellas. And by the way, I strongly recommend that if you're even a little bit interested in farming for the Mindbender's Ambition shotgun, you get going at it right now with a group of friends. A, it's not often 
recommend that the Nightfall comes around for farming purposes, but more importantly, B. As I mentioned earlier, Oppressive Darkness can definitely help out with running the strike quickly, and remember when Season 9 drops, our artifact is getting completely wiped clean. Meaning we're gonna get all new perks and we'll no longer have access to Oppressive Darkness. And while it's definitely possible that there could be some new god tier perk available for us to abuse in Nightfalls, eh, why risk it? Get in there right now and start farming. If you haven't already, you still got until Tuesday. RN Jesus be with you. But yeah, thank you for all these suggestions. Thank you for being a part of my community. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.